Hi there. Greetings to God's chosen people scattered throughout the world. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. Amen. I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. The message to Ephesus. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know what you have done. I know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been. I know that you cannot tolerate evil people and that you have tested those who say they are apostles but are not and you have found out that they are liars. You are patient. You have suffered for my sake and you have not given up. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and do what you did at first. If you don't turn from your sins, I'll come to you and take your lampstand from his place. But this is what we have in your favor. You hate what the Nicolaitans do as much as I do. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To those who win the victory, I'll give the right to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God. This is the letter that was written by John when Jesus gave him the message to give to the church in Ephesus. And he starts by introducing himself so that those who read the letter, they will understand who he is. When John was writing the letter, he did include all the information about how he got the information. And he also explained to them what he saw. So this is Jesus speaking directly to the church of Ephesus. I'm the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven gold lampstands. If we read earlier, we found out that he explains what the seven stars are and what the seven gold lampstands represents. He said this is the secret meaning of the seven stars that you see in my right hand and of the seven gold lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven limbstones are the seven churches. So he started by introducing himself so that those who read the letter will know exactly who wrote it. And it was Jesus himself. He saying, I know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been. And that you cannot tolerate evil people. And you have tested those who claim that they are apostles but are not. And you found out that they are liars. There are many people who were claiming to be apostles before. They are still claiming to be apostles. But they took many people, many people down. They didn't know what they're doing. They are still don't know what they're doing. This is the abomination of desolation that is written in the Bible that I'm talking about. That is happening these days. That will continue to happen until Jesus stops it. So many people... Even when you discover that many people were taking the Jews, you ran away from your church. Because the church and the government became one. The pastors and all the church leaders, the evangelists, most of them, they were encouraging people to go along with what the government was saying. But Jesus told us that we are, you are not a friend of this world. If this world hates you, just remember that it hated me first. So if this world loves you, then that means you are part of the world. So for you to be with Jesus, you have to be separate from the world. Jesus is saying, you have been patient, I know, and you have not given up. Do not give up. But he's saying, I have a problem with you. And the problem he's having with most of us is that we do not love him as we did at first. Our love is now going somewhere else. Instead of giving it to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, as we did at first when we came to know him, when we really loved him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength, when we promised that I will save you for the rest of my life. Because of sin and what is happening around these days, normalizing what we shouldn't be normalizing, normalizing sin, 
Jesus is saying, turn from your sins. He is telling most of us to turn from our sins and follow him. He is saying, if you do not turn from your sins, I will come to you and take your lampstand from its place. That means if Jesus comes and takes his lamp in you, that means you are no longer a Christian. If Jesus removes his lamp in you, his presence in you, if he takes his Holy Spirit from you, that means you are no longer a Christian. Because you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. Of course, I know we don't see it when it happens. We end up just walking and going along, thinking that we are okay. But what I discovered is that if you sit down and think how far you have fallen, you will realize where you went wrong. You will realize how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and come to Christ. By repenting, we have to repent. Turn from our sins and come back to Christ and love him as we did at first. With all the happiness you had, all the looking forward to be with Christ forever. All the eagerness for rapture to happen today so that you will be with Christ. I remember when I used to speak to somebody some time back, the person used to say, oh, rapture, 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 all the times. But now they are saying, oh, do you think if Jesus comes today, you will take anybody? I don't think so. I'm like, why? And the answer was, many things are now bad and many people cannot make it. So I don't think you will come now. Okay, if you think pe many people have fallen now and they don't care at the moment, do you think if he comes later, he'll find you okay? Because oh, once you start thinking like that, it means uh, you have gone look home. You have gone cold. Because there is no expectation at all of you wanting to be with Christ. There is no love. But he's saying we have to turn from our sins and love him as we did at first. But he's saying he has something in your favor, which means you hear the Nicolaitans do as much as he does. You do hate sin and you do hate doing some other things that people do that you know that they are not supposed to be doing if they follow Christ. You hate idol worship. You hate fornication. You hate a lot of things that the Nicolaitans do as much as he does. And he's saying that is what we have in your favor. Because of that favor, he can give us a chance. You have to listen if you've if you got ears. You must listen because this is the Holy Spirit giving a message to the churches. It is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit telling us that we have to turn away from our sins. And we have to be faithful to him. We have to love him as we did at first. And he promises us eternity. He's saying to those who win the victory, I'll give the right to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God. He will give you the access to the tree of life. That is what he's saying. If we turn away from our sins and repent and come back to him and love him as we used to do at first. That means once you discover that some people are liars, they claim to be apostles, and they are liars, don't linger around them. Because the moment you linger around them, you become colder and colder and colder. We have to turn away from our sins. Repent. So that Jesus will keep shining within us. So that he will keep living in us. As he promised that he will do. He will give us access to the tree of life. Remember Adam and Eve when they sinned, they couldn't have access to the tree of life. They couldn't have it because of sin. And when they did sin, they did not repent. They did not repent. And they were sent out of the Garden of Eden because God said they cannot eat the tree of life after what they did. Because they ate the tree of knowledge and the tree of life was still there in the Garden of Eden. And if it was there, they were going to eat it. And when they ate it, they were not going to die. And that was not going to be good. Because they'd already sinned. If you go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 22, it says, Adam and Eve are sent out of the garden of Eden. Then the Lord God said, 
Now the man has become like one of us, and his knowledge of what is good and what is bad. He must not be allowed to take the fruit from the tree that gives life, eat it, and live forever. So the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden and made him to cultivate the soil from which he had been formed. Then at the east of the side of the garden, he put living creatures and a flaming sword, which turned in all directions. This was to keep anyone from coming near the tree that gives life. So the only way you can have access to that tree in the Garden of Eden it is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can have access to that tree. And Jesus is promising us that to those who win the victory, when he says he will win the victory, it means it's a battle. You might not fight it physically, but it's there in spirit. And you must be victorious. That is what is telling us that we must be victorious for us to have the access to that tree of life. And if we do not repent, if we do not come to him and love him as we did at first, there is no way we are going to access that tree of life. At least we still have some favors with the Lord. Because we hate some of the things that he hates. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very difficult to win the victory. Especially if you turn from every corner and you discover that each and every person whom you thought they were apostles, they were liars. You find yourself alone sometimes, at the end, some of the times, you won't have anybody to talk about Jesus. Do not give up. Spread the word of God Almighty. Spread the word of Jesus Christ. He is coming. There is not much time left. We are already in the Revelation book. Triple six is here. And everything has already been set up. So we have to be victorious. And we have to look forward to be having access to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God Almighty. Because once you eat that fruit of life, you will not die. That is why Adam and Eve were sent out of the Garden of Eden, so that they will not eat it. But Jesus is promising us that we can have access to it. We can eat it through him. To those who win the victory. You have to go through this. You have to go through what is coming. Read the Holy Bible. Know what is coming. Ask him to help you. If we know what's coming, we will be prepared in spirit, in our mindset, and physically, because you know what's coming. If you don't know what's coming, it's going to be difficult to make it. Jesus knew what was going to happen with him. He knew that he was going to die. He told the disciples what will happen after he dies. But when they were told he has risen from death, they couldn't believe it. We have to know what's going to happen. Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him. And he went through it, and he was victorious. We have to overcome by the power of his name and the power of his blood. We have to ask him to help us to overcome. We have to ask him to help us so that we can store more of the extra vessels of oil. As many of the lamps now, they are blowing out. Let's ask him to help us to store jars and jars of extra oil so that our lamps will keep shining until he shows up and we can manage to go with him to the wedding feast. Thank you very much for listening. Let's keep in prayer and ask the Lord God Almighty to help us so that we make it. By the power of the name of his son Jesus Christ and by the power of his blood. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Goodbye.